today's video, we're gonna take someone who is going to pay to build something, who I'll refer to as the owner in this video, and talk about the different ways that person can approach their construction project. They'll need to hire an architect and or a design team, as well as hire a contractor, general contractor, or construction manager to complete this project. And every construction project, large or small, has a project delivery method, whether or not people are aware of them. Think of the delivery method as the game plan. And to put simply, a project delivery method is where the owner or the person who's paying to have the project completed determines how the contracts are structured and what everyone is responsible for doing throughout the project. So by the end of this video, you'll understand the different project delivery methods as well as understanding the pros and cons of each. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so we've got six project delivery methods we'll cover today. Design Bid Build or DBB, Design Build or DB, Construction Manager at Risk or CMAR, Construction Management Multi-Prime or CMMP, Public-Private Partnerships or PPP or P3, and then finally Integrated Project Delivery or IPD. Let's take a closer look at what a Design Bid Build or DBB project delivery method looks like. So this option, if selected by the owner, involves a design team and a contractor who each work for the owner under separate contracts. This method consists of three phases, which make up the name Design Bid Build. So the first phase is design, which is when the architect collaborates with the owner. The second phase is the bid phase, where the design is complete and the owner requests bids or pricing from multiple contractors to get the lowest qualified price on their project. The last phase is the build phase, where the awarded contractor starts construction. The architect, the owner, and the contractor work together throughout the remainder of the project. So the design bid build delivery method is used because it creates pricing competition through the bidding process so the owner is getting a lower price for their overall project. A low cost project would seem like a win for the owner, but I'll explain why that might not be the case in just a second. From the contractor's perspective, this delivery method may be viewed as a negative because it does force lower profit margins through this competition and it creates less room for error during construction. So let's circle back now and talk about why the lowest bid might not be in the best interest of the owner. Okay, I'm gonna use an example. So let's assume that the project was awarded by the owner to the general contractor and they have a contract in place. It's becoming apparent during the early stages of construction in this example that the drawings are incomplete, meaning that parts of the building were not fully drawn or thought out ahead of time, needing redesign or further design while construction is active. Well, the lowest awarded contractor provided competitive pricing against other bidding contractors, meaning that they provided the owner a cost for exactly what was on the drawings and nothing more. So depending on the language in the contract and the project documents, the owner may be at risk for paying for these errors that they were not originally accounting for. Since the owner holds the contract with the architect or design team and then a separate contract with the general contractor, the owner is actually stuck in the middle trying to resolve these issues. This example scenario could lead to project cost increases and schedule delays because the owner is managing these two contracts separately and they might not just have the knowledge or the time to represent themselves efficiently. Okay, so this leads us into our next project delivery method, which is design build or DB. So with the design build project delivery method, the owner has one contract with both the architect and the general contractor. The owner can choose to hold the contract with either the architect or contract in this scenario. If the owner decides to hold the contract with the architect, the general contractor would therefore be a subcontractor to the architect in this design build scenario. If the owner decides to hold the contract with the general contractor, the architect would therefore be the subcontractor to the general contractor in this design build scenario. Sometimes the design team and the general contractor are the same company under the same roof. So this method is used and preferred by owners because the owner is no longer the middleman or woman between the architect and the general contractor. It provides the owner some protection from risk if either the design team missed something or the contractor missed something. Well, 
why is that, you may ask? Well, because both the architect and the general contractor are working under one umbrella and one contract, there's really no excuse from an owner's perspective as to why something would be missed since they should be collaborating together. So with this project delivery method, the owner limits potential change orders and schedule delays after design is approved and complete because of this all-inclusive bundled contract deal. Also, the general contractor and architect are both involved from the start, which helps with constructability, meaning the contractor can provide feedback on design. The negative from the owner's perspective is mainly due to the missing word bid. In design build, the design team and general contractor are selected from the start under one contract, so the owner is not getting a competitive bid on the front end for those early services. On larger projects, the general contractor will likely not self-perform all of their scope and will still likely need to bid out parts of their scope to subcontractors. I thought you just said that there's no bidding in the design build process. So yes, remember, there is no competitive bid process for the general contractor in this scenario. There is still likely competitive bidding for the subcontractors under the general contractor in this scenario. Okay, moving on to construction manager at risk or CMAR. So a construction manager at risk is a fairly common project delivery method in the commercial construction industry. Construction manager at risk is a form of design bid build. It's just that CMAR takes it one step further. A construction manager at risk is hired by the owner to provide representation throughout the design phase, the bid phase, and the construction phase. The CM at risk assists in overseeing the design process as well as managing initial cost estimates for construction. This helps the owner stay comfortably within budget without needing to fully understand the cost of construction. The CM at risk tracks down all the bids from various contractors and presents them to the owner for selection. The CM at risk oversees the remainder of construction, as well as all the processes that follow the bidding process and manages the awarded contractors. The CM at risk method is great for new owners who don't fully understand the construction process because they're essentially hiring someone to handle majority of the communication for them. The construction manager at risk delivery method is often associated with a specific contract type known as the guaranteed maximum price contract, which is one of the main appeals for both an owner and a contractor. I'll cover GMP or guaranteed maximum price price in a future video. Next we have Construction Management Multi-Prime or CMMP. So this delivery method is also known as multi-prime and essentially the owner acts as their own general contractor. The owner holds not one contract with one GC, but rather multiple contracts with what they call trade or prime contractors. Prime contractors are the biggest players in terms of scope and dollar value on a project. This delivery method is for owners who fully understand the construction process and who want to represent themselves through this knowledge. This allows owners closer and more direct communication with each contract. This, however, can get messy and costly for the owner if they don't understand construction and don't understand all the necessary coordination that takes place between the contractors behind the scenes. So the next project delivery method we have is public-private partnerships, or P3. It's just that. A government body such as a city, a state, or a federal department work together with a private company to facilitate the completion of a project, whether it's a toll road, municipal water facilities, etc. So this doesn't mean that these projects are privatized or become privatized, these projects are owned by the public through the government. These projects are just managed by private companies through these partnerships on the basis of knowledge, experience, and efficiency. These private companies are driven by incentive-based goals to perform well, which ideally is a win-win scenario for the government, these private contracting entities, and the public. And finally, the last project delivery method is the Integrated Project Delivery, or IPD. This delivery method is one of the newest delivery methods in the construction industry and was meant to be forward thinking. This delivery method ties all partners and parties together under one contract, which is meant to spread all the risk and all the rewards amongst all parties equally. Everyone is working together or integrated from the start to the finish of the project. I've never personally seen this delivery method implemented, but supposedly it's out there. Okay, so we just talked about the various project delivery methods, which again is the game plan for completing projects. What we did not cover, which I'll cover in a future video, are the different types of actual contracts. Yes, there are multiple types of contracts, including lump sum, guaranteed maximum price, cost plus, and more. So all of the project delivery methods we talked about today have pros and cons, and it really all depends on the project team, because every single one of them can be successful or not successful, depending on your team. So I hope you're able to take away some of the clarifications on the differences in today's video. If you still have questions, feel free to drop a comment below and reach out to me. And as always, be better, build better, and bye for now.